What do you love so much? Your Majesty. Speak up, girl. I know who I am. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're looking at actors who weren't on screen for long, but left a strong enough impression to take home the Academy Award. Oh, see, darling, I knew it was just plain sociable for me to come and say hello. Number 10, Gail Sondergaard. Anthony Adverse. 13 minutes and 34 seconds. The 9th Academy Awards introduced the Best Supporting Actor and Supporting Actress categories, with Gail Sondergaard winning the latter. She maintained the record for the shortest Oscar-winning performance for over 15 years. Rather interesting, don't you think, Don Lewin? Starting as a Shakespearean stage actress, Sondergaard made her film debut here as Faith, a diabolical housekeeper. Sondergaard casts an icy shadow over every scene she's in, delivering her lines with devious elegance. Hurts, doesn't it? Makes you cringe. Detestable creature. What is it you want? Your name in marriage. Her expressions alone are enough to make the audience feel as if they've entered a spider's lair. The Oscar-winning role set the stage for Sondergaard to play more villains, even being considered for the Wicked Witch of the West. Sondergaard turned down that role due to the makeup, but was always bewitching, no matter how small a role. I never played her ugly. If you look back over all the films That's I've right, done, they were always very glamorous I played against it, or... always, and it's much more intriguing. Number 9, Margaret Rutherford, The VIPs. 13 minutes and 6 seconds. 1964 saw Patricia Neal win the Best Actress Oscar for HUD. At just under 22 minutes, it'd be the category's shortest winning performance ever. Yet, it wasn't that year's shortest Oscar winning role. I go in for those prize contests. How shiny at shampoo changed my life in 20 words or less. You know, they give free two week trips to Europe. But I end up with the fountain pens and the Japanese binoculars. Margaret Rutherford won Best Supporting Actress for her delightful work in VIPs. This aptly titled ensemble piece included big names such as Elizabeth Taylor, Richard Burton and Orson Welles, among others. Rutherford stood out with her comedic turn as the absent-minded Duchess of Brighton, who takes one too many pills before boarding a plane. You see, it's the first time I've ever flown, and this morning I had to borrow one of my maid Armstrong's pep-up pills. <laughs> it's picked me up all right, but not just up in all directions, it would seem. Also winning a Golden Globe, Rutherford showed that even on an aircraft full of A-listers, a character actress can soar above the rest. Humorously, Rutherford was at the hairdresser when she won, while Patricia Neal was asleep. Duchess, please, you're playing. Tell it, it can go without. Number 8, Jack Palance, City Slickers. 12 minutes and 24 seconds. 1991 gave us two Oscar-winning roles that were low on screen time. I just turned around and rode away. Why? I figured it wasn't going to get any better than that. These characters possess such larger-than-life presences that you'd swear they were in their respective films longer. In under 25 minutes, Anthony Hopkins hissed his way to a Best Actor Oscar as Hannibal Lecter. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Almost 40 years after being nominated for Shane, Jack Palance lassoed Best Supporting Actor for a different kind of western. While sadly short-lived, the rugged Curly Washburn scored one of the funniest one-liners in City Slickers. I'm sorry. I didn't mean anything by that. I crap bigger than you. At the same time, Palance brings surprising depth to Curly as he teaches Billy Crystal's Mitch about finding that one thing in life. Palance was 73 when he won, but he had the energy of a 23-year-old, doing one-armed push-ups during his speech. Did you see that guy? That is the toughest man I've ever seen in my life. Number 7, Jason Robards, Julia. 10 minutes and 49 seconds. Jason Robards received his first Oscar for portraying Washington Post editor Ben Bradley in All the President's Men. That role clocked in below 13 minutes, but Robards topped himself one year later, winning Best Supporting Actor again for an even briefer performance. That's what I like, that's what we work for. I don't know what happened, but you better tear that up. 
Playing another historical figure, Robards slips into the role of Dashiell Hammett, the author of hard-boiled detective novels such as The Maltese Falcon. The 1977 film Julia is based on a story by Hammett's longtime romantic partner, Lillian Hellman, portrayed by Jane Fonda. It's only fame, Lily. Just a paint job. If you want a sable coat, buy one. Just remember, it doesn't have anything to do with writing. It's only a sable coat and doesn't have anything to do with writing. Hellman's friendship with the titular Julia wasn't exactly as autobiographical as the author claimed. However, the film touches upon the very real friendship between Hellman and Hammett, with Fonda and Robards sharing natural chemistry during their fleeting screen time. And when you die, will you want me to feel that way about you? I'll outlive you. Uh, maybe not, you're stubborn. Number six, Martin Balsam, A Thousand Clowns. 10 minutes and 18 seconds. Funnily enough, Jason Robards took center stage in this 1965 dramedy, but co-star Martin Balsam won the Oscar for his supporting work as Agent Arnold Burns. Uh, wish to God I didn't enjoy you so much. I don't do you any damn good at all, too. The brother of Robards Murray, Arnold, couldn't be more different than his sibling. When Murray is a joker who refuses to conform, Arnold is a practical thinker who wishes that his brother would blend in with the crowd. Murray, I finally figured out your problem. There is only one thing that really bothers you. Other people. The enemy. Watch out, Murray. They're everywhere. Despite being at odds, Arnold loves his brother and can't bring himself to be that mad at him. Arnold could have been a one-dimensional role, especially with such limited screen time. Yet, Balsam brings layers to a former prankster who surrenders to society for the sake of his family and sincerely believes that Murray needs to do the same. We fellows have those offices high up there so that we can catch the wind and go with it however it blows. But, and I'm not going to apologize for it, I take pride. I am the best possible Arnold Burns. Number five, Ben Johnson, The Last Picture Show. Nine minutes and 54 seconds. Martin Balsam's record for the shortest winning performance in the Best Supporting Actor category was broken six years later. It's hard to believe that Ben Johnson appears for less than 10 minutes as Sam the Lion, which speaks volumes about his charisma. You boys can get on out of here. I don't want to have no more to do with you. Scaring a poor unfortunate creature like Billy just so as you could have a few laughs. I've been around that trashy behavior all my life. I'm getting tired of putting up with it. In his finest scene, Balsam delivers a nostalgic monologue about the one who got away and his longing for more time. It's a simple yet profound moment that's only more powerful knowing that this is Sam's swan song. I don't need to think about things like that too much. If she was here, I'd probably be just as crazy now as I was then in about five minutes. According to director Peter Bogdanovich, Johnson turned down the part three times because he thought it was too wordy. Johnson remained uncertain even when John Ford pushed him to accept. He eventually got on board after Bogdanovich said that he could win the Oscar. What are you grinning about? Chicken fry me a steak and try to use meat this time. Number four, Gloria Graham, The Bad and the Beautiful. Nine minutes and 32 seconds. Breaking the record previously held by Gail Sondergaard, Gloria Graham prevailed in Best Supporting Actress with nine and a half minutes. She doesn't appear until the third act of The Bad and the Beautiful as Rosemary Bartlow, a Southern belle married to a screenwriter. Of course, I realize that in two weeks, I can't do more than just barely scratch the surface. In a film full of cutthroat characters, Graham shines as a shallow wife with wandering eyes, ultimately leading to her downfall. Graham kept her Oscar acceptance speech short as well, summoning a thank you very much before darting off. The James Lee Bartlow's in Hollywood. Isn't that a ridiculous idea? Besides which, what could Hollywood possibly offer us? She described this as a really bad attack of Oscar fright. Graham allowed her son Timothy to play and sleep with the statue, saying, no fond mother takes away her child's favorite plaything. The Oscar would move to Graham's mantle during her later years, however. You take a good look at yourself in that mirror. You've changed since you come to Hollywood. Number three, Maureen Stapleton, Reds. 
9 minutes and 15 seconds. This historical epic is over 3 hours long, with Maureen Stapleton appearing in less than 5% of the picture. I don't hear, I wait. They've jailed more anarchists, but they made Bill Shadow head of the Siberian Railway. They treated me very well, and I'm reserving my judgement. Just because her screen time is brief doesn't mean that the shoot flew by for Stapleton. One scene required her to perform 80 takes, leading Stapleton to ask director Warren Beatty if he was out of his mind. It paid off in Oscar gold, as Stapleton won Best Supporting Actress for playing real-life Russian-born activist Emma Goldman. Will you tell Max I'd like a picture of myself in the magazine? And under it, I would like the words deported. In 1919, the government of the most powerful country in the world is afraid of this woman. Stapleton portrays Goldman as someone who might not seem imposing on the surface. If you challenge her to a debate, though, she'll always hold her own with firm resilience and rapid-fire eloquence. It's a small role that manages to be towering, scoring Stapleton the Oscar after three previous nominations. The dream may be dying in Russia, but I'm not. It may take some time, I'm getting out. Number two, Judy Dench, Shakespeare in Love. Five minutes and 52 seconds. Yes, the illusion is remarkable. And your error, Mr. Tilney, is easily forgiven. But I know something of a woman in a man's profession. Yes, by God, I do know about that. Accepting her Oscar for portraying Queen Elizabeth I, Dame Judi Dench famously said, I feel for eight minutes on the screen. I should only get a little bit of him. Actually, Dench's screen time was closer to six minutes. In any case, it's funny to think that Dench spent hours in costume and makeup departments for what's practically a cameo. Nevertheless, Dench still brings an all-encompassing presence to the sharp-tongued queen. Nature and truth are the very enemies of play acting. I'll wager my fortune. I thought you were here because you had none. As intimidating as she can be, Dench injects the role with a sly playfulness and a soft spot for a good romance. It might not be the most complex role of Dench's illustrious career. As Robin Williams said when he opened the envelope, though, there is nothing like a dame. Too late, too late. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Beatrice Strait – Network 5 minutes and 2 seconds Network marked several Academy Awards records. It remains tied for the film with the most acting wins. Peter Finch became the first posthumous acting winner. Last but not least, Beatrice Strait still holds the record for the shortest Oscar-winning performance. I know I'm obsessed with her. Let's say it. Don't keep telling me that you're obsessed, that you're infatuated. Say that you're in love with her. Besting Gloria Graham's record by 4 minutes and 30 seconds, Strait played Louise Schumacher, the wife of a news division president. Strait is nothing short of explosive in a scene where Louise's husband comes clean about an affair. This is your great winter romance, isn't it? Your last roar of passion before you settle into your emeritus years. Is that what's left for me? Is that my share? She gets the winter passion and I get the dotage? As her earlier restraint crumbles, Louise unleashes all of the anger, sadness and neglect she's been bottling up for years. And somehow, there's an ounce of love left as Louise accepts that her marriage is over. It's an Oscar scene in every sense. You're in for some dreadful grief, Max. I know. What small role would you award an Oscar? Let us know in the comments. I get up. I go, I lie a little, I pedal a little, I watch the rules, I talk the talk. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.